I've built a model that predicts the proliferation of urbanized land in 11 counties that make up the Delaware Valley region. If successful, this model could be invaluable to planners who want to know where to preserve land, build infrastructure, and alter zoning. As planners, we have a general theoretical understanding of what land will become urbanized. We can guess that it will be near infrastructure like transit and roads, that it will be accessible to jobs and other population centers, and that it will be unbuildable land. The challenge of this modeling process is to turn this knowledge into variables that we test on past urbanization and therefore know to be predictive of future development. I will now highlight a few of the variables that are included in this model. The first is the cost distance to the Philadelphia CBD, which weights proximity to the city center by road accessibility. As you can see, this variable is more closely fit with the dependent variable, the log of urban area in each census tract, in tracts that are closer to the city. I included multiple variables that operationalize the relationship between urbanization and proximity to roads. In the case of limited access highways, one would be inclined to develop near exits, but far from other portions of the road, where development is likely to occur near all portions of non-limited access major roads. Taking the log of distance to the nearest road greatly improves its fit with the dependent variable. We know that urbanization rates are spatially autocorrelated, meaning that highly urbanized tracts are likely to cluster together. In light of this, we can create spatial lags, which are the sums of urbanized cells in any tract's neighbors. Spatial lags created using a first-order queen weight matrix account for a tract's neighbors, whereas second-order matrices account for the neighbors of those neighbors as well. To predict for one time period, we include spatial lags from the previous time period. Ultimately, I settled on 14 predictors for my model. They all tell different stories about urban development patterns. As you can see, road density and spatial lag of urban areas are among the important predictors. I assess my model's goodness of fit by training it on 2000 data and predicting for 2010. I then compare those results with the observed urbanization rates for 2010. Like all models, this one includes error. What's interesting to note about this map is that the spatial pattern of the error is mostly random. This indicates that the model is able to pick up on the spatial autocorrelation in the dependent variable. I was able to test the model using out-of-sample cross-validation. The low values for R-squared and RMSC standard deviations mean that I was able to get consistent results and that the model is not overfit to the data it's trained on. I also performed an out-of-sample test for each of the 11 counties. I iteratively removed each county from the data set, trained the model on the remaining 10, and then used those results to predict for the county in question. Camden, Chester, and Montgomery counties are distinct from one another, which explains the variation in model performance across the bunch. I saw significant underprediction in Chester County as compared to some underprediction in Camden. With data on urban development patterns in 1992, 2000, and 2010, I went about predicting for 2020. My predictions for 2020 reveal an almost certain problem with the model. It predicts that almost every county will have a lower rate of urbanized area than it did 10 years previous. Given what we know about urban growth, we know this will probably not be the case. Interestingly, the model did not underpredict in the same way when estimating 2010 urbanization from 2000 data. The 2010 prediction residuals were, for the most part, evenly distributed between positive and ne negative. The discrepancy in the model's inability to account for existing urban land cover in predicting the future is something that demands a closer look. In future iterations, the model should be adjusted to fix this effect. If successful, this model could be very useful in planning for future development. However, it must be tweaked in order to make more robust future predictions going forward.